guys remember the old Batman Beyond show that used to come on the CW? Yeah, we're talking basic cable, basic channels. Every Saturday morning, you had your bowl of Frosted Flakes, sprinkle a little bit of extra sugar on there, get into some good TV shows. This is actually the Batman Beyond helmet but from the Arkham Knight series video game, and I'm going to be bringing it to life. Before we get into this, there are definitely a couple things that we're going to need in order to make this helmet look realistic. Let's check out with Alfred. Yes, Master Wayne, please, with caution first. We have your palm sander. To weld this together, I've provided your soldering iron. And for those imperfections, sandpaper. I want to get into a topic that I'm, that's like, I think it's super important because I see it a lot. I see a lot of people like go super ballistic about getting their printing set, the printer settings, the level, all of that good stuff, getting that down right, finding it out somehow, and then printing a good print, and then not taking the time to sand their print down right. And at the end of it, it just looks like clunky, and like you can see where like the bondo is, or if, like they sanded and didn't wash it down. You can see that through the primer, it just looks like, well, what did you go through all of that for? I'm going to try to give you a basic breakdown of what sandpaper to use, when to use it, the difference between dry and wet and dry sandpaper. Let's get to it. Now, this is one of my first 3D prints when I got my first uh, CR-10S, and I was able to print helmets at a bigger size. But you can see right here, you see how that like clunky kind of like look? It's because you get like something like this while you're printing. You might not sand it down the best, put some primer over and then just color over it and then you're done from there. That makes everything look so ugly. And it's like, I get it. You just want to get done with the print and just move on. But it's like, me personally, I can't, I couldn't look at my print that looks like that. It's like, just take the extra step to make it look a little bit better. So my main key is to start off with the 80 grit. I don't always use my palm sander, so that's not an excuse. Still use my sanding block. But this 80 grit, I've mentioned in a couple of my other videos, but this is just like the go to when you're first starting. You'll see I have some under extrusion here at the bottom, some fraying, some layer hair sticking up. All of these that are sticking up here, this 80 grit is going to knock it down just great. The 80 grit gets everything down to like an even consistency. That's what you want to focus on when you're sanding is to get everything on the same plane. Now, if you see, if you look closely, you can see the grains or the direction of which the print was go printing in. Obviously, since it was printing like this, it was going line by line in this direction. So since these lines are going like this, what I'll do when I sand is I'll go up and down going against the grain, which is to me, I just feel like gives a better result. This is where I always say it takes a lot of elbow grease <laughs> and a lot of strength to actually get this done, which is why I understand a lot of people may quit or may stop because sometimes it does get a little bit tiring. This is why I always say stop, just come back to it at a different time to complete it. From the 80, once I get everything solid and knocked down with the 80 as best as I can possibly get, what I'll do from there is I'll coat it with primer. After that primer is settled, I'll then bump up from the 80 to 180 or something around this range, depending on how bad it still looks from there. If it still has a lot of like under extrusion that's really looking bad and a lot of this stuff that's still sticking up, I'm going to hit it with the 80 again. If not, from there I'll continue. From the 180, 220 is about the highest that I go with dry sandpaper. Again, I don't want to sand this too far down and start to create like my own looking under extrusion which i have done using a palm sander i'll sand it too rough and then all of my print will just start to like break away so that's what i mean by sanding it to get it to even texture in even layer and then letting the primer come over that and hide everything from there from there if you look at the video above it's best to rinse off your print after you're done sanding, because if not, you'll start to get that like chalky look, which some of you guys get as well. And you probably don't know why that's happening. It's because after you put the primer or after you sand, it's best to rinse off the prop, rinse off all that old stuff. It actually says it on the rattle can. If you actually read it, clear surface, clean surface before you actually put everything on. But since you wet everything, 
This is where wet and dry sandpaper comes into play and this stuff makes a humongous difference. As I've said before, the regular sanding kind of just gets down the big stuff, but this wet and dry sandpaper is what gives you more of a smoothing effect. Once you wet the prop and wet the sandpaper and then start to rub and go over the prop, you'll start to see an actual shine come through your primer and come through your prop. Now I'm not saying be a perfectionist. Again, set a standard. Make sure you don't see any clunks because anything that you see in the primer stage, you'll then see in the paint stage. But just take your time, sand everything down. Trust me, when you get to that point where everything is perfectly sanded, you're not going to want to paint it because it's going to be like that nice looking gray finish all around. And from there, you're just going to like, that's where you want to be. Where it's not like, oh man, I rushed, I just put the color on, it's still looking clunky. But hey, you can see, I, what I like to say is don't let the person who made the file do all the work you pick up from there by finishing it off and making it actually look good and something that actually somebody would be proud to have speaking of sanding i think the print is done now so let me go grab it start to sand it and start to solder and here's how i do that part okay so when it comes to soldering the main thing that i try to focus on first is making sure that i make a cut somewhere where it's not going to affect any of my detail along with that I also make sure that I get one part that's an anchor, which you see here, and one part that I can actually move. This helps as I'm soldering on this line, keeping this as a base, I'm able to open this mouth open and close to make sure that this line goes as even as possible. The more even that I get this line here, the easier that it is to make that line go away. After I get a good trace on the outside, from the inside, it's a lot easier to just simply brace. This isn't anything that anybody's going to see, so I'm able to get a lot tougher on the inside. And this is the second goal of everything. So as you can see, right under the eyes, I mean, that's pretty hard of a spot to get in there. So that's why you still see the clumps in there. But like I said, everything will reveal and as I said as well, if I can see it right now, if I put paint, even though this is going to be black, which black hides everything, you're still going to see that. So this is just going to be a little bit more sanding. Once I get this face done, then it's going to be ready for paint. Trust the process. Now as that next coat dries, of course, the next thing that we want to get into is paint. Now, depending on what you're trying to achieve, if you're trying to make something that's accurate or if you're just trying to have fun with it and make your own creation of course that's something in its own but to get something more accurate there are different sites or there are different reference images that you can find of course google being the most useful search engine there are different keywords that you can actually use such as like screen use prop so on and so forth and that will lead you to a good reference or image this here is a post that was on reddit that i was able to use and get to see like the different angles, front, back, side, so that way I know exactly what I have to do, what colors I have to use, and where I should actually paint what. And for the collectors out there, of course, there are always Hot Toys. Now I do a lot of comics, a lot of heroes, so Hot Toys is a good reference on what to actually do. That suit looks amazing. <laughs> Guys, the suit's coming soon. Everybody keeps asking me to make one, so definitely have to make one. But Hot Toys is definitely somewhere that you can go. I mean, if you're making a helmet and you're making a suit yourself, maybe you might want one of these collectibles, or maybe you're just making the helmet and you might want to have a display case and add one of these collectibles just to make like a background kind of thing. So Hot Toys serves for a lot more purposes, but one of them that I use them for is for references. So as far as paint goes, I have two separate options that I think that I'm going to go with. Either the gloss black that you just seen or the satin or ultra matte black just to give a, a non-reflective kind of finish. Yes, there are different versions, but I'll be finishing off some of the silver with this here graphite powder. The cheap stuff. <laughs> Gets the job done. Now, come on, guys. You know I wouldn't trip. <laughs> But definitely hit the subscribe button to stay tuned for some of my upcoming builds. Yes, that's take two to the Blue Beetle helmet. And I have another pumpkin bomb coming up where I actually split in half. 
and now I'm going to be able to add the LEDs and electronics a lot easier. As you can see, this is all inside of the K1 Max where I have upcoming reviews, build tutorials, and how to use the slicer for that. So if you're somebody who's never 3D printed something before, if you're already into it, or if you're on the edge, definitely check out my channel for more on how I do what I do. This is a space where you can be yourself and talk about creation without judgment. You're not a nerd, you're creative. In order for me to even do this, somebody smart had to make this stuff that everybody uses. So let's talk about it because I know a lot of people like it, but have to hide it just because of the image. So also ring the bell so that way you get all the notifications when I go live and we can chat. Back to the video. Let's light it up. And that is a beautiful end result if you ask me. 
Now the metallic, as far as the graphite powder, it is good to note that it's very dull in the light. So you can see the difference. But I do like that effect because it's Batman, he is a ninja. So it is something that you want to keep like discreet. It's not something that I want to have like a bright reflective silver metallic look on. If you haven't noticed, the end of my videos are kind of like Marvel movies, so you kind of get a sneak peek at what's coming next. But besides that, this one's a wrap. It's time to give it its home. It's going to look amazing next. <laughs> that thing is sick. Right next to the Batman who laughs. I should actually, guys, on a live, how I should actually organize my tray, um, my display case, like which helmet should be where. I kind of have like a DC side and then like a Marvel side. But I kind of want to interact with you guys, see how you guys want me to display my different props. Some hot toys would also be pretty cool to go on there. I was looking at like a glass case. Put some LEDs in there. There's a video on Test It from Adam Savage that kind of like shows how he does it. It's pretty cool. Besides that, thanks for hanging out, guys. Peace.